Amen. John chapter number 15 tonight. John chapter number 15. And then if you'd bookmark Joshua chapter number 7. John chapter number 15. And then Joshua chapter number 7. Well, it's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. And uh, man, I believe if there's going to be grass in heaven, it's going to be blue. Amen. Right. And uh, I enjoyed that singing, and uh, I appreciate that. And uh, man, the choir, didn't they knock the ball out of the yeah. park? And man, I mean, just absolutely phenomenal. And uh, it's always, always intimidating uh, coming to Calvary Baptist Church because y'all do everything first class for the Lord. And uh, so anyway, uh, not that it's enough. Uh, to come and preach in front of your pastor. and uh, But then they get up here singing and introduce all them other pastors, and they've been pastoring them like 30 years, 25 years. I'm like, my goodness. I ain't been pastoring but seven, amen. I feel like a donkey, amen, <laughs> that's wandered out on the track at the Kentucky Derby, amen. I mean, like, what in the world, you know? And uh, But anyway, uh, I woke up this morning, and uh, I still didn't know. The Lord hadn't given me what he wanted me to preach. And I thought, well, Lord, it's getting pretty close. <laughs> I would appreciate it, uh, you know, if, you would, if you'd give it to me. And, uh, and by the way, you know, I, I don't know. I, sometimes you get to preach those messages that you've already had. And, and you know, they call them a sugar stick or whatever you call it. But uh, anyway, uh, I, just, I just didn't get to preach that. And uh, I believe this. I believe the Lord. Um, had one message that he wanted preached tonight, Amen. and uh, it was my job to seek his Amen. face and to find it. And uh, I'll just be honest with you, man, what a wait. And uh, I, I mean this, and don't say it lightly, um, but my job tonight is not to please Brother Pope. And, and, uh, and I do believe wholeheartedly in pastoral authority. And uh, if I say one thing out of the way, you set me down, and I'll sit down. You won't have a problem out of me. And, uh, but all I'm saying is my job is to please the Lord. Amen. And I know that if I please the Lord, then I'll please Him. Yes. And, uh, and so I've just begged God today to give me what He would have you to hear, and I believe that He's given me that. And so I just want to please Him. And uh, I'm thankful for the opportunity to be with you, Calvary Baptist Church. And, uh, man, just a good crowd, good crowd on a Monday night. And I uh, know, know so many of you. And uh, thank you for being faithful to your church on a Monday night. And I mean that. And then uh, let me say, I know that that pleases you, Pastor. I know that it does, does his heart well. And uh, I promise you that you'll never know on this side of heaven what it does for him and his dear wife to see you here on a Monday night and faithful each and every night. And I know that you are. Thank you for being here. Then I want to thank some of our folks for being here. And I mean this from the bottom of my heart. And I appreciate their prayers. I got several texts today about uh, people praying. And I appreciate the prayers. And I do. And uh, I appreciate it more than you know. We've got to have, we've got to have uh, each other praying for one another. Amen. Yeah. And uh, we are to exhort one another and to lift each other up and to pray for one another and to bear one another's burdens. And so I appreciate the them praying for me today, and then it's good to have my wife and my family with us tonight. And uh, well, I don't take that lightly, amen. And uh, but I do thank Solid Rock for being here tonight. And so I'm gonna start this timer. Is that all right? Just so I kind of know where I'm at. And uh, I just want to obey the Lord, though. And uh, so anyway, if you would, John chapter number 15. And I've asked the fellows, um, I asked Brother Pope if they they could put the verse, the theme verse for your uh, meeting, kind of up here on the screen. Uh, just for, and they leave it for the entire the entirety of the message if they will. And uh, I'm just going to reference that a couple times uh, throughout. And so, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. And uh, I read that verse and uh, seen that flyer and read that verse. And there was two, there was two, um, two words in that one verse that the Lord really stuck out uh, in my mind. And it is the word magnify and the word together. And uh, so anyway, I'm not really going to preach from that. I'm really going to preach from John 15. Um, but I'm going to touch on that and reference that verse and those two words uh, for tonight. And uh, so let's go to the Lord in prayer before we read, before we get into the message tonight and ask the Lord for his help tonight. Dear Lord, we thank you, God, for another day. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege, Lord, the opportunity, Lord, to be among your people. And Lord, we just, no other place we'd rather be than in the house of God. 
Lord, I realize, Lord, that I stand, Lord, with, uh, where no man can stand alone. Lord, I realize that there will be nothing accomplished tonight except you do it. And Lord, except you use me, Lord, except I abide within the vine. Lord, I beg and I pray, Lord, that you'd help me, God, to uh, stay behind the cross. Lord, that you'd help me to say every word tonight that you'd have me to say, not one single word tonight that you wouldn't want me to say. Lord, help me to preach in the right spirit with the right heart. And Lord, help me, God, uh, to do only what you could do. And Lord, speak to people's hearts through me. Lord, I know that you don't need me, but God, I need you. And I ask you, Lord, that you'd help me tonight. Anoint me from on high. Lord, we'll be so careful to give you every bit of the honor and every bit of the praise and every bit of the glory tonight. And we'll thank you for it. And thank you for this church. And thank you for this dear man of God. In Jesus' name we so humbly pray. Amen. Amen. Well, Psalm 34, verse number 3, and it says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. And when I read this verse, again, those two words, magnify and together, stuck out. And I looked up that definition of magnify in the Strong's Concordance and in the Noah Webster 1828 today. And, and uh, here's what it meant. It meant the, to make great in representation. And we are to make the Lord great. And uh, we're to make him great in our words, amen, and in, in thanksgiving yeah. and in song and to worship him and to magnify him and, and to exalt him in, in the words that we say. But we're also to magnify him in the life that we live. Uh, we are to make him great. We are to represent him well, amen. The Bible says that we are ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are his CEOs. We're his representatives of heaven. The only thing that people are going to see of the Lord Jesus Christ is what they see in mine and your life. Amen. Uh, the word magnify means to exalt. It means to elevate. It means to make great or to make greater. Amen. To make great or to make greater. So on the way of introduction tonight, I got just a few questions before we really get started and dive into the message tonight is, number one, is the Lord great in your life? Is the Lord great in your life? Is he huge in your life? What fills your life tonight? Uh, does it, is it the Lord Jesus Christ? How much room does he have in our life? The second one is this, the Bible, the, the, the Noah Webster, 18, said it means to great or greater. To magnify means great or greater. And, and if he is great in your life, let me ask you a question. Do you want him to be greater yeah. yes, in your life? And, uh, you know, preacher, the, the longer I stay in this thing and the closer I get to the Lord, uh, the, the, more and the, the, realize, the more that I realize how far I really am. Amen. From the Lord. Paul said it like this. I have not apprehended. Amen. And listen, we've, we've never, we're never going to apprehend on this side of heaven, but, but I believe that we ought to press toward the mark. Amen. And we ought to keep pressing. And the more we press, amen, hey, the more opposition that we'll face. Amen. Hey, but we just got to keep pressing on for the glory of God. Do, is he great in your life? But do you want him to be greater? Amen. In other words, do you want him to have more of your life? And then let me ask you a question. Do you want him to have more of your life? Hey, do you want more of him, but do you want him to have more of you? You know what I found out? He wants just as much as you'll let him have. Hey, Hey, he wants just as much as you'll let him have. That word great. You ever looked up a word in the dictionary and you thought, you read the definition, you thought, well, I don't even know what that word means. I'm going to have to look up that word, see what definition is. And uh, I know y'all are a lot smarter than I am, but I, so I looked up the word great. I thought, well, I wonder what great means. Uh, if he's going to be great in our life, I want to know what great means. And so I looked up the word great, and it means this. It means notably, notably large in size. It means predominant, yeah. supreme, yeah. distinguished yeah. by rank. Here's what it means. It means chief. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Kind of sounds like that he's supposed to be the Lord of Lord in our lives. And boy, are we not living in a day where there's a lot of people that wants a Savior, but very few people really and truly want a Lord in their life? 
I mean, hey, Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter number 4, he said, hey, there's coming a day where there's a crowd that will turn their ear away from the truth. Amen. Hey, Jesus said why it is here on earth, I am the truth. Hey, man, uh, Paul's telling Timothy that there's coming a day uh, where people will say, hey, you know what? No, thank you, God. You can butt out of my life. I appreciate you saving me, hey, but I'll take it from here. Hey, man, and they turn away from the Lord, turn away from his truth. They turn unto the word, to their, to their will, to their lust, the Bible says, to their desires, and they're walking away from the Lord. Amen. Well, I'll be honest with you, I've been kind of guilty of that before. Amen. Have you ever been guilty of that? And so I don't know about you, but I've wasted enough of my time. Yes. Oh, really, I've wasted enough of his time. Yes. And uh, he is the life giver. Amen. He's the life sustainer. And uh, James said, what is our life? It's but a vapor that appeareth for a little time. So our life is just a little span of time. And so we want to make good use and be a good steward over our time. And the greatest way to do that tonight is to allow the Lord to steward your life for you. Amen. Uh, acknowledge him in every way, the Bible says, in all things, and he will, he shall direct thy path. Amen. And so are we acknowledging the Lord? And so he's to be notably large. Amen. People ought to make note that the Lord is large in our life. And that word great, again, means predominant, supreme, distinguished. And uh, we ought to be dis a distinguished people, amen? Uh, we ought to be a peculiar people. Amen. I'm peculiar, amen. Praise God. Amen. And, uh, and so, hey, we ought to be that. And if we, want to be the, if we want the Lord to be notably greater in our lives, then we must get notably smaller. Good. Hey, John said it like this in John 3.30, he must increase, but I must decrease. Increase, uh, it means advance in quality. Amen. And he must advance in quality. And by the way, he wants to advance in quality. Hey, he said, I came to give life, and I came to give it more abundantly. And there's a lot of people that have the promise of eternal life, but we're never entering into the abundant life. Amen? And the only way to enter into the abundant life is for us to get smaller and smaller and him to get greater and greater. Amen? And him to be magnified in our life. Amen? Hey, I'm telling you, for 17 years, I thought law enforcement was what I wanted to do, and it was. And I ran from the call of God. Can I just preach pretty transparent tonight? Is that okay? And uh, I'll be honest with you, a lot of people think they put preachers in spiritual bubbles, and, uh, but we struggle. Man, I used to, I remember sitting on the pew and thinking, man, I'm telling you, man, it must be nice to be the preacher. <laughs> Amen. And... Uh, <laughs> I remember, I remember ignorantly thinking that. And, and man, he, man, it must be nice not to have the battles and the struggles. I mean, but I'm just telling you, hey, there's more battles and there's more struggles. Hey, but I'm glad that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. But I'm just telling you, hey, I ran for a long time wanting to do what I wanted to do instead of what God wanted me to do. They sang about it. He'll let you do it. If that's what you want, hey, he'll let you do it. He is a gentleman, amen. He will not force his way in your life, amen. Hey, but I'm telling you, what you think you want for your life, if it's not what he wants for your life, I will assure you, no matter how much you think you want that for your life, it is not what you want for your life, amen. Hey, the only way to have the abundant life tonight is to have his life, amen, to have his joy, amen. Amen. Look with me in John chapter number 15 just for a moment. Look with me in verse number 11, and, and we'll back up and talk about a few other things. But verse number 11, Jesus is speaking, and he said, These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. And I've been preaching a series on, on Wednesday night at the church of when his joy becomes our joy. 
And so the only way for his joy to become our joy is for, us, for his joy to remain in us, amen, right. to remain in us. And when his joy remains in us, then his joy can become my joy. And by the way, joy is not based upon feelings. Right. Amen. Well, I tell you what, you want to mess your life up, just make decisions based on feelings. Right. Right. Amen. I'm just telling you, hey, feelings are up, feelings are down. You know one thing that they taught us in law enforcement? One of the first things that they taught was uh, that that is like a seesaw. Emotions go up, judgment goes down. And so there's always a seesaw there. And, and when emotions go up, judgment always goes down. Good. And the worst thing that I've seen people do since I've been pastoring is make decisions based upon their feelings. Make decisions based, well, I just don't feel, preacher, that that's quite right. Well, I'll be honest with you, and I say this with a compassionate heart tonight, it's not about how we feel. Because our feelings change. They're up and down, up and down, in and out. And, and I'll be honest with you, uh, but the Word of God never changes. Amen. Amen. So we ought to base our judgment, we ought to base our decisions tonight upon the Word of God. But, well, I feel, well, let's see what the Word of God says about it. Amen. Because a lot of the times that I've been pastoring, amen, in those short, seven short years that I've been pastoring, here's what I felt like doing, bro, Chad. Boy, can y'all identify with that? I mean, amen. Here's what I felt like doing. I, 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 okay, I'm just going to be transparent with you tonight. Is that all right? Here's what I felt like saying. Amen. Here's what I felt like telling them. Amen. Y'all all right? But when I got in God's Word... He said, you don't need to say that. You don't need to do that. He said, I'll tell you what you ought to do. You ought to just be quiet. I told a guy the other night, I told another preacher just the other night, I said, you know what I found out in the seven short years that I've been pastoring? Most of the time, most of the time when I want to move and I want to do something and I want to say something and I want to go in this direction, most of the time God just tells me to hush. God just tells me to be still and be quiet and leave it alone and he'll work it all out. But it's right, God. It's right. What I want to say, it's right here. I've got Bible for it. Hey, i got, let me say it. You, see, you can say it if you want to. Hey, you can mess it up if you want to. Or you can let me do it. Man, I've just found out in my life, every time I let the Lord do it, yeah. amen, every time I just say, hey, Lord, it's yours, man, he always works it out, yeah. amen. Yeah. Good. Yes. He must increase, but I must decrease. His way, his will, and his work must increase and be greater and stronger in my life than what I want to do and what I want to say and where I want to go and what I want to tell them. Amen. You okay? Man, I'm probably just being too transparent. I'll be honest with you. We just need to preach right down where we live. Amen. By the way, if we're going to magnify the Lord... This is mandatory, not suggestive. It's mandatory, not suggestive. Let's look in John chapter number 15 tonight. John chapter number 15, Jesus is speaking, and he said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and Every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it. We know he's not talking about salvation. He's talking about bearing fruit. Right. That it may bring forth more fruit. Right. Verse number three, the Bible said, Now ye are clean through the word. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch, what would be me and you, cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except 
ye abide in me. Now, there's two exceptions to bear fruit, that we must abide in him. He must abide in us. Not really what I want to look at tonight, but I just wanted to make note of that. I circled each time the word abide is in this text, and I counted nine times. In verse number four, abide, abide, abide. Verse number five, abide. Six, abide. Verse number seven, abide, abide. Number, verse number 10, abide. Number 10, abide. And so there's nine different abides in here. And we know that in the book of Galatians, there's nine different fruits of the Spirit. And I believe that's the fruit that he's talking about wanting us to bear. Amen. Uh, that fruit of like long suffering. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That fr fruit of love. Amen. That, that agape love, that, that love like Christ loves, that, that love that covereth a multitude of sin. Amen. Hey, that, mo that love that overlooks the faults of imperfect people. Amen. Uh, that, no, that, that love, amen, that God wants us to bear, amen, overlooks things and keeps us from getting what we would call bitter. Really, there's two kinds of fruits. Bible speaks about there's a corruptible fruit and there's incorruptible fruit. I don't know about you, but I want to bear, uh, I want to bear the right kind of fruit. Yes. And I want to bear this fruit that the Holy Spirit produces. And he said, hey, the only way that you can do that is if you can stay connected yes. and stay hooked up, yes. amen, to the true vine. Amen. And, and so, it, it, listen, how many, how many of you could agree with you, agree with this? Hey, we came to church yesterday morning. Man, we had a great service at Solid Rock yesterday morning. We came back last night. Man, I'll be honest with you, it broke out. I didn't even get to preach. The big preacher showed up. And, man, I'm just telling you, hey, hey, we were connected to the vine. And, man, he was pouring out that joy in our soul. And if we're not real careful when we leave on Sunday night, You're right. yeah, that's good we'll come unconnected. And then preacher will go out there and we'll listen to this and we'll listen to that and we'll watch this and we'll get in the break room around the guys and, and we'll get in work and, and we'll get around the things of the world. And, and man, I'm just telling you, we'll come back in here on Monday night and we'll try, oh, it'll take us all service long to get back connected. And right at, the end of, right at the end of the service, I mean, we'll just start getting just a little drop and just, rip, 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 rip. There's just a little drop will come out. You think, man, what a great service. And we leave, and man, I'm telling you what, we go home, we start getting ready for work again, and we become disconnected, and we get home, and there's no meditation on God's Word, and, and we go home, and we watch the TV, and, and we do all these things, and we, and, and we, and we spank the kids. And anyway. I mean, we set them down and discuss things. Amen. We go to work. We come disconnected again. We come back Tuesday night. May just re, 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 drip, drip, drip. Hey, anyway, we try to get connected right before service ends. Hey, I'm telling you, hey, brother Pope gets up here and the choir sings. But I mean, just listen. Could you imagine what it would be like? If we left tonight and we went home and meditated on the Word of God. And we meditated on what the preacher preached. And, and listen, we meditated on those songs that the choir sung. And, and listen, I know we got to go to work. And I know we got to live amongst that. And I know we got to be around some of that. Hey, but we ask God to guard our minds. And we ask God to, to put on the, help us to put on the whole armor of God and, and to protect us and to shield us. And, and then we ask God to cleanse our mind. And before we come to church, we got around the family altar got our wife by the hand, and, and we got down on our knees, and we begged God to do something. You ain't got to have a church service at home, but I just wonder what it would be like tomorrow night if we could just stay connected to the vine. I wonder what it would be like when the choir got up here to sing. Man, I wonder what it would I just wonder what it would be like when the preacher got up here to preach, if he got up here to preach. So what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying we must decrease. He must increase. We must get smaller and smaller and smaller. Yes, we must allow him to have more and more and more of our lives. Hey. 
John chapter number 15, he said, I am the true vine. My father is the husband. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, speaking of God. Every branch that beareth fruit, he, speaking of God, purgeth, purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. He purges it so it will bring forth more fruit. God the Father not only cared about the true vine, the Lord Jesus Christ, while he was here on earth. Let me say this. He cares about the branches tonight. Amen. God cares about me and you. Amen. I can't explain that. The Bible said he knoweth our frame. It is but dust. God cares about you. God loves you. Amen. He sent his only begotten son to die for you. But there's a pruning that goes on and a purging that goes on in John chapter 15. He said that every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Every branch that bringeth forth fruit. I'll be quite honest with you, that purging ain't always easy and it ain't always fun and it is certainly not comfortable to our flesh. But it is always right. Because God's always right. Yes. Amen. And so that branch, according to the Strong's Concordant, is, is described as tender and flexible. And listen, if we're going to bear fruit, our hearts must stay tender and we must stay flexible and shapeable and moldable to God's will for our life. Amen. If we want to produce this fruit that only comes uh, by, through and by the Holy Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, we must stay flexible and moldable and formable. How about this? We must, must have a teachable spirit. Amen. One thing I always do, no matter where I go, one of the, I love coming here. I love being around your pastor. I love being around Miss Tammy. And I always tell my wife, I said, listen, you know we're going to be around them. I ain't, I ain't boasting them up. I'm just telling you the truth. I said, you know we're always going to be around. I said, we're going to be around them this weekend. They're going to do our marriage conference. I said, you know, are we going to go with them? We're going to be on, at y'all's marriage conference or whatever. And, uh, and I appreciate that opportunity because I always tell her, I said, now you watch Miss Tammy. You watch her, and you learn from her. Now, I'm going to watch Brother Pope, and I'm going to learn from him. And so I always want to have a teachable spirit. And so let me say this. Sunday school teachers, listen, I, I, I wouldn't do anything in the world. I, I believe, I really believe that I'm standing in one of the greatest churches in the world. And I mean that. But can I say this, Sunday school teachers and Anybody involved in a ministry at Calvary Baptist Church, always keep a teachable spirit. Don't ever think, don't ever get to the point to where you think you know more or you know better than this man right here. Because God's only going to speak to one man in this building for the direction of this church. Yes. Yes. And he's sitting right there. Yes. Yes. That's good. The moment that we think we know better, we know less than we've ever known before. You're right. And so sometimes, and listen, it's easy to get there because we all have this flesh. And so sometimes we're not real careful. We call it pride. Yeah. The Bible says pride goeth for destruction. A haughty spirit for a, a fall. And, and so we want to be obedient to the Lord, what the Lord wants for our life. Yes, we want to allow him to purge what he don't want in our life, no matter how bad we want it. That's good for you. We want to allow him to purge the people out of our life that he don't want. You okay with that? Yeah. We're, we're no better than anybody. But over and over and over and over again, the book of Proverbs teaches us 
to stay away from certain people. And they will affect you. Be all right just to follow the Lord. They'll affect you. Listen, the Bible's not suggestive in its commands. It's, it's not being suggestive in what it says. It, it's telling us that for protection. You okay? Proverbs 22, verse number 24 and 25. The Bible said, no, make no friendship with an angry man. And with a furious man, thou shalt not go. Lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. I know where I'm standing tonight. I know where I'm at. But you hang around somebody long enough that's sideways with somebody in your church. You hang around somebody long enough that's sideways with that man right there or that, that dear woman of God right there. I'm going to tell you what it's going to do. It's going to become a snare to you. And before long, the devil is going to take. See, we're not against those people. We're against the enemy, the devil. We're talking about we want to magnify the Lord. We want him to become greater than what we, amen, than what we want for our life. We want him to become greater in our life. And listen, the only way to do that is to go by the word of God. Stay with the vine, amen? Hey, stay with the Lord. Listen, we're not choosing sides at Calvary Baptist Church. That divides the church. Hey, listen, you go to Exodus 32, and you'll see Moses coming back down off the mountain. God, God said, he was up there spending time with the Lord, and he said, hey, Moses, you're going to have to get down off the mountain. People went crazy down there. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Get back down there. Moses coming back. The Bible says he's coming back down there with the word of God and the work of God in his hand. The people's got impatient. You see an impatient people. You see an imperfect, uh, you see an improper power. Those people go to, to Aaron, an impressionable preacher. Somebody they can make an impression on. And here's what, here's what, here's what they've done. Man, let's just put it down where we live tonight. Can we do that? Can I come right here? Yes, sir. They'll go to a man or a family that has influence in the church. And they'll try to turn those people and impress them to turn. And what they're doing is trying to gather their team up to be on their side. You see what I'm saying? And listen, that's division. So as soon as anything like that happens, we know that that is not of God, no matter who it is, because God is not of division. God is of unity tonight. And God doesn't want this crowd going with this crowd and this crowd on the preacher. I'm not here to say, hey, who's on the preacher's side and who's on the... Here's what I'm saying tonight. Who's on the Lord's side? Who's on the Lord's side? Because if we're on the Lord's side, we're not divided. We're in unity. And so when Moses come back down the mountain, Moses lost his cool. Amen. And if I had to deal with that hard-headed crowd, I'd have lost my cool too. Amen. <laughs> murmuring. Amen. What now? I mean, man, listen, read your Bible. They was murmuring, complaining. As of that Moses. Right? Brother Pope. He always wants things done perf. I mean, he can't ever please him. <laughs> Amen. I mean, man, just, just whatever. Listen. If you ain't got anything to murmur about, the devil will give you something to murmur about. <laughs> Amen. Will he not? And so, listen, he come back down. Moses threw the tablet down. Moses threw the work of God down. I, I, believe, I, believe, I believe just for a minute, I believe he's done. He had a call of God on his life. Yeah. And then you'll find Moses in Exodus 32 pleading for those people. Yes, sir. 
I don't care how you treat that man right there. I'll promise you this, Calvary. He's pleading for you. He's praying for you. She's praying for you. And listen, the only reason they're doing that is because God has got a call on his life and he has got a love that God only can place in his life because his flesh don't want to pray. They ain't a one of our flesh wants to pray. The disciples, their flesh fell asleep. Amen. But you'll find Moses pleading for that crowd. Now he got up there and he said, hey, listen, he said, he said, we're going to figure something out. I, man, I ain't going to preach that. But I'm just telling you, as imperfect people, I mean, there's, a, there's impatient people, there's an improper power, but there's an imperfect pastor. He's not perfect. He's going to mess up. He is. He's going to mess up. Probably not near as much as I do, but he's going to mess up. <laughs> Miss Tammy's going to mess up. Every once in a while they're going to mess up, but you know what we're going to have to do? We're going to have to learn how to look, overlook that. Yeah. If we want God magnified and go on for the glory of God, and look over people's mess-ups. And look over people's mistakes. And look over imperfections. Amen. 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 And listen, you say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go somewhere else. Well, it's imperfect too. And friend, if the devil can run you off from Calvary Baptist Church, guess what? He's waiting on you when you get to the next one. He's waiting on you. He, hey, listen, he knows what device it takes to trigger that response. And I'll promise you, hey, he'll use a Judas somewhere else in the mix, hey, to trigger that response. And the next thing you know, listen, if you ain't going to stick this thing out and you ain't going to stick by God and you ain't going to stick on the Lord's team and you ain't going to stick by the stuff and you ain't going to forgive and you ain't going to love, hey, he'll have you hopping around everywhere until he's got you hopping home. Yeah. So Moses said, hey, here's what we're going to do. I ain't worried about who's on their side. I ain't worried about who's on my side. He said, but anybody on the Lord's side? He said, y'all come on to me. Y'all gather yourself over here. Anybody on God's side, just gather over here. And when they did, there's a crowd that left. And there's a crowd that gathered. And that crowd that gathered, he said, hey, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go on. God said, you go and lead them. You're ready to go on now. You're ready to move forward. You're ready to magnify the Lord. You all right? You all work you okay? And so what we want to do is we want to abide within the vine. Wait, we want to stick with God. We want to stick with God's crown. Hey, you have some opposition that wants to keep you, Calvary Baptist Church, from magnifying the Lord. There's a pruning. There's a purging. There's only one, th only one person that does that purging. There's only one person that does that pruning, and that's God. Why he does that is because he sees a church bearing fruit, and he sees a people bearing fruit, and he wants you to bear more fruit. That phrase, beareth more fruit, here's what it means. It means that he wants you to bear a better quality of fruit in your life. The reason that he does the purging is because he wants you to bear a better quality, listen to this, and a better quantity of fruit in your life. Why? Because he wants to be magnified. And it's our fruit that magnifies the Lord. In our life, amen. Why does God purge these branches? Because he wants you to bear uh, better fruit. Because he cares for you. Because he loves you. Because he wants what's best for your life, amen. And he knows what needs to leave your life. And he knows what needs to be put in your life. Right. Amen. amen. And only he knows that. Right. Amen. 
Verse number two says that you may bring forth more fruit, greater fruit. Remember, what does magnify mean? It means great. It means greater. Amen. Hey, he, you say, well, I'm magnifying the Lord. Preacher, I'm magnifying the Lord. But God wants more of your life so you can magnify the Lord in a greater way. Amen. How does he purge the branch? How does he purge? Well, the Bible says that he purges through his word. What does purge mean? Well, it means to cleanse. It means to remove. Here's what it means. It means to remove anything unnecessary. It means to clean to cleanse. It means to trim away any of the impurities. And so God looks at this branch and he says, hey, you know what? That right there needs to go. That right there. I hate a weed. Man, you talking about OCD, preacher. I'm not sure you even know how OCD I am. Amen. <laughs> when I get out of the car, I walk through the parking lot and I'm looking for any imperfections on my way to the church and on my way to the door. Amen. When I come up on the flower bed, I'm searching that flower bed for a weed or an imperfection. And listen, I'm like this right here. Or if we're running late, I'll tell my boy, hey, get those weeds right there, would you? <laughs> and you know what blows my mind? Is those things can come up overnight. Right. Man, they've got to be of the devil. <laughs> They'll grow anywhere. <laughs> You can have a crack in your asphalt or your sidewalk that big, and there will a weed grow. Where's my son? <laughs> we was over there at the church doing some work the other day. You can walk down the steps on the outside into our basement, and there's two brick walls on each side as you go down the steps. This is on, I took a picture of it. On the way down, Brother Pope, this high off of the step is a weed growing out of the side of the brick wall <laughs> that's surrounded by concrete. My goodness. What'd you do? I pulled that thing. Amen. <laughs> and so that's all God wants to do. He's looking. He's saying, hey, that right there needs to go. You know, if you'd let me trim that up a little bit, you could bear a little bit more fruit right there. Amen. That's good. Listen, not a sin, just something that's unnecessary in your life. And man, if you if you could just if you could just move this right here, I, if you'd just remove this right here, because there, there's some more fruit that could grow right there too. And, Bless the Lord. Yeah. Listen, there's just some things that I see that's listen, it don't look like you ought to look, a Christian ought to look. There's just some things that I see there in your life. Now, he ain't looking on the outside. The Bible said he looks on the inside. Now, I'll be honest with you. If we'd get the inside right, we wouldn't ever have to worry about the outside. And so God looketh on the inward. And so he's looking on the inside. And he said, man, that right there, that don't belong in your life. That just needs to be purged. Would you let me purge that? If you'll take that and remove that out of your life, uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll replace it with some fruit. And that thing that you think it's giving you joy, that's really not giving you joy. I'll tell you what, it's really taking just a little bit too much of your time. And it's not necessarily wrong, it's just taking a little bit too much of your time. And, and I'll tell you what, if, if you would just trim that up a little bit, listen, you don't even have to remove it, but if you just trim that up a little bit and kind of get that thing in check, yeah. Where it don't have to, it don't, it don't have to be removed. You, you can hold on to that because there's nothing wrong with it. But, and listen, I ain't got to name things. God's naming them in your heart. That's God's job to name that thing in your heart. And so, listen, if you're spending a little too much time right there, listen, just let me trim it up a little bit where it don't hinder and choke out the fruit. God, in other words, says, you know what? I see <laughs> your capability. Yeah. Right. If you would just abide in me 
and I'll abide in you, and you'll let me tell you what to move and what not to move. How many could agree with this tonight? I know I've got to hurry. How many could agree with this tonight? That when we get in a time crunch in our life, man, we live busy lives, do we not? We get in a time crunch in our life. Generally speaking, the very first thing that goes is the spiritual things in our life. You're right. Now, I don't have time to read my Bible today. I got to go visit. Nothing wrong with visiting, but it shouldn't take place of our Bible. Listen, I, I got to get to this. I got kids, and I got this, and I've got that, and I've got to hurry, and I've got to do all this. But you know what? I, I, I'll read it tonight when I get home. And then when you get home, whew, I know it's. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get up in the morning. I'm going to read it. And you see, this is this is the pruner. This is what God uses to prune and to trim and to, to cut away. The Bible says it's sharp as a two-edged sword. Piercing, amen, on the inside. And so this is what he uses. He uses the Word of God. He don't use it. Well, I just don't feel like it. He don't use our feelings to prune. He uses the Word of God to prune our life. And the reason that he does it is because he cares about you and he loves you. And listen, he wants to sanctify you. He wants to set you apart for a greater service. Mm. Good. I remember telling my pastor, I remember thinking this many, many times. Man, I want to be used. Man, I want to be used. I want to be used. I want to be used. I want to be used more. I want to be used more. I want to be used more. But God was needing to set me aside to be used. He, that's what the word sanctify means, to be set apart. You're set apart from the world. You're set apart to him, and you're set apart for his glory. And so he wants to, that, that there's a present and a past and a future sanctification. And when the moment that we're saved, he sets us apart and places us in Christ. We're sanctified forever and for eternity uh, positionally in Christ. And then he wants to continually, presently sanctify us, calling us closer and closer to him and further and further away from the world. Amen. In other words, he wants all of our desires and all of our wants and all of our lusts to decrease, decrease, decrease. And he wants all of his fruit to increase, increase, and increase. So Ephesians 5.26 says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. And so here's the pruner tonight. This is, this is the pruning shears tonight. We say, how does it prune, preacher? Here's how it prunes. We hear it. We receive it. We allow it to go down into our heart. We trust it. And we obey it. Listen, I'm just talking about me. I'm just talking about what I've been guilty of in my life. God said, you know what, nothing wrong with that, but you need to trim that up a little bit. I really want you to grow better fruit and a greater quantity of fruit, and I want you to magnify me more than you ever have in your life. And for a lot, a lot of years, I said, nope, I'm good bearing the fruit that I'm bearing. I'm good magnifying you, Lord, just as much as I'm magnifying you. I don't want to magnify you any greater. Really, this is what we're saying. I don't want to magnify you any more than I'm already magnifying you. I said, okay, I've told you. You've heard it. It's up to you. It took me a little longer than most. Brother Pope, there was a time that he come by, and I remember surrendering my life at the altar at Northwood Baptist Church. And I give him my schedule, and I said, Lord, here's my schedule, here's my calendar, here's my life. Amen. Whatever you want out, I want out. Whatever you want in, I want in. I'll just be honest with you. 
it don't hurt near as bad as you think it will. Right. Matter of fact, it don't hurt at all. very thing I was holding on to was what was killing me and it was destroying me and I didn't even realize it until I said you know what enough's enough God here's my life whatever you want to cut away you cut away listen Lord whatever you want to replace it with you replace it with whatever direction you want me to go I'll go if you want my badge, I'll give you my badge. If you want, if you whatever you want, you want my salary, I'll give you my salary. For the very first time in my life, I quit turning from God. I started turning to God. You know what amazes me, Brother Pope? In all them years. All them years wasted, saved, born again, blood washed, and on my way to heaven. All those years I wasted. The moment I turned around, he is still right there. He still loved me. He still wanted me. He still trimmed me up. He still reused me. If he'd use somebody like me, I'll promise you, he'd use somebody like you. You say, preacher, you don't know what I've done. You don't know what I've done. And I'll promise you, you can ask the musicians, ease up this way, just start playing. It'll be, it'll be okay, preacher. Tell you what God wants you to do tonight. God wants you to bear more fruit. God wants you to bear better fruit so Calvary Baptist Church can go on in a greater way than it's ever went before. Hey, let's all stand to our feet tonight. I wonder if there's anybody here that could identify. Just saying, telling the Lord no. Lord, I'm magnifying you enough. I'm pleased with my life. I'm, I'm pleased with the, thing, the way things are going. And I just wonder tonight if the Lord put his finger on anything in anybody's life. Hey, God knows your heart. Sir, God knows your heart. Dad, Mom, God knows your heart. Young people, it ain't worth it. Young people, that boyfriend and that girlfriend is not worth God's joy in your life. Have you obeyed the Lord tonight? obey the Lord tonight I'm not being boastful about what I'm saying I'm just telling you the truth I give up a full time salary a 401k retirement this year I'd be 23 years in I could retire at like 51 years old I'm 43 God's retirement plan is much better than this world's retirement plan. So what are you saying, preacher? I'm just saying it don't matter what you give up if guess what God wants you to give up. Losing his joy, losing his fruit, ain't worth it. You obey the Lord tonight. If you're here tonight, you're not saved or you're not sure about your salvation. The Lord spoke to your heart. Boy, it would be a wonderful night, a wonderful night to get that settled and get that right. The people's around the altar. You mind the Lord tonight, preacher.
with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. Wow, wow, wow. Man, heaven sent. I was thinking while I was sitting down there tonight, you, you'll never hear any better than that. We could, we, we could have brought a, a nationally known evangelist in from across the country. You'd never heard him better than that. Boy, none of us like that purging, do we? In, in, including the guy that's talking to you right now. None of us like that purging. A lot of folks in the altar tonight. A lot of folks have used the altars tonight. Can I just ask this real quickly before we close up tonight? Is there anything that while the preacher was preaching tonight, anything that the Holy Spirit maybe pinpointed in your life? I mean, the preacher didn't name it. But while he was preaching, the Holy Spirit said, you know what he's talking about? He's talking about that thing that I've been dealing with you about for a little while. It's time to remove that. It's time to get rid of that. It's time to go a little different direction been speaking to you about that for a little while is there anything at all that the spirit of god sort of pinpointed in your life tonight if that be the case before we leave this evening would you just step out and come to the altar tonight do business with the lord folks are still in the altar let's don't rush the invitation tonight anybody else well god spoke to me man oh man I sure want God to bring more, uh, bring forth more fruit, better fruit, greater fruit in my life. I want to, I want to magnify Him in a greater way. Man, oh man, wonderful, wonderful tonight. So, Lord, we thank you for your blessings. Lord, thank you for allowing us to hear from heaven tonight. Lord, sometimes these are the kind of messages that are a little tough for us to hear, but Lord, it's the kind of messages that we need to hear. Father, tonight, we thank you for the Holy Spirit that you've given to us. And, and I pray that your Holy Spirit tonight would, would put his finger on that thing that maybe we need to remove or maybe we need to do less of or maybe we need to dedicate less time toward or, and, and, and Lord the preacher's right it might not even be sinful necessarily but it's a, it's a weight it's a hindrance Lord I pray that you would allow us to allow you to purge those things from our lives and I pray that we would bring forth greater fruit that, God, we would glorify you in a greater way. Man, wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to my heart. God, help us to be separated. Help us to be sanctified. Help us to walk before you in holiness and sanctification. And, Lord, would you forgive us for when we buck and when we rebel when we disobey, when we lack that yieldedness, Lord, that we ought to have. God, forgive me personally tonight. Forgive me. God, I pray that you'd continue to work in the invitation. And we sure thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. You can look up this way. If you're watching live stream tonight, we're delighted to have you tuning in. There's a number on the bottom of your screen right now, 704 327 Five six six two. If we can pray with you, if we could um, share Christ with you, we'd love to do that right now. We have some folks waiting to receive your call. If you'll call that number, we'd love to talk with you right now. We're going to sing this little chorus tonight, church. It simply says, "Amazing Grace." How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. If you need to come, the altars are open. There'll be somebody up here with a Bible. They'll they'll meet you and greet you. Especially if you're here tonight, and you need to be saved. Could be. Uh, this happens all the time. Folks come in, and I don't recognize, I don't even recognize they were visiting with us until the end of the service. That's happened, I don't know how many times that's happened at the conclusion of the service. While we're shaking hands, folks will come through, and I'll think, man, I didn't even know you were here. I'm so sorry. And so you may be here tonight and, uh, and don't know Christ as Savior. If that's the case, if you'll just go to one of these aisles and come down here, we would love to take a Bible and 
show you how you can know for sure that you're on your way to heaven. And I hope you'll do that tonight. And we're going to sing this through a couple times. And if you need to come, altars are open. You come tonight while we wait. All right, Calvary. Let's sing it together tonight. And rejoice about this amazing grace tonight. Sing it with me. Ready? That was great. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Man, did you enjoy that tonight? Amen. Amen. That was wonderful. I sure appreciate the great, great message tonight. Exactly what, uh, what we needed to hear, exactly what I needed to hear. It's the kind of preaching we want at Calvary Baptist Church. It's the kind of preaching that helps us. It's like I said last night, man, it, every, every service is a building block. And, uh, you know, that's just, that's one of those messages that just needs to be preached. It just needs to be preached. And, uh, you know, every one of us, every one of us, including this guy that's talking to you right now, sometimes we just get lax, don't we? And we just, we get a little, we just get careless. Is that, is that the right word? We get careless, and sometimes we begin to allow little things into our life. And, and boy, I'm so glad that God brought the preacher by here tonight to, to just help us. And aren't you glad? Aren't you glad about this too? That that we have a loving heavenly Father that cares enough to prune, yeah. and He cares enough to purge. Um, sometimes people, uh, you know, sometimes people will shy away from Calvary because they're afraid if they come here, they'll get, you know, they'll get some preaching that sometimes, you know, there's conviction. And I tell people this: conviction's not a bad thing. Conviction's a great thing. Yeah. Conviction's a great thing. You know what conviction is? Conviction means God's still working on you. Conviction means God hasn't given up on you. He's still working, and we thank the Lord. We praise the Lord for that. It was great, preacher. Thank you so much. And, uh, man, that's going to help us. It's going to help us as a church. And so we thank the Lord, and we praise the Lord for that. Uh, did you enjoy Harrison Ridge tonight? Amen. Amen. That was great, guys. Thank you all for, for minding the Lord. and. These guys all stay very, very busy, and I, I sure appreciate them coming and being a blessing to us this evening. Let me mention a couple things real fast. We'll do it again tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. We'll kick the service off tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. Pastor Ethan Green from the Victory Baptist Church up in the uh, big, giant metropolis of Newland, North Carolina, is going to be preaching for us. Now, I'm making a joke there. Y'all know that if you've ever been to Newland, you know what I'm talking about. It's not a metropolis. And um, we went up there to a meeting, uh, Brother Abel and I and Miss Lauren, and we went up there to a meeting. Brother Abel said, Preacher, he said, uh, 
I want to introduce you to, to Ethan Green. He said, go, you want to go to a meeting with us? So we went up there on the mountain. And Brother Green, good night. I mean, the guy was so gracious. And he said, preacher, if you'll come up here, and come up here. He said, we'll put y'all up. And he did. He put us up at a place called the Pineola. And uh, uh, there, and I didn't know what the Pineola was. You don't know what the Pineola is either, probably. Well, it's about the only hotel in, in Newland. And, uh, and it was a nice place. I appreciate him doing that. But Newland's just, a, Newland's just a little place. But the work that God is doing at Victory is not a little work. They're in a little place, but boy, I'm telling you what, the work that God's doing at Victory, it's a big work. And they just bought their own mountain. I'm not exaggerating on that. They just bought their own mountain. And uh, they've paved our drive all the way up to the top of that thing, and they've put a big camp meeting center up there. And, uh, and boy, the church is growing, and God's just using Brother Green. I'm telling you, just using him in a big way. Well, he's going to be with us tomorrow night. And he'll be preaching for us. And then three for him. We haven't had three for him in a little while. And three for him is going to be singing tomorrow evening. Our Calvary Choir is going to be singing. And we're going to have a wonderful time together. And so I hope that you'll be back tomorrow. Bring somebody with you. Let me do this real quickly before we go. Um, is anybody anybody here tonight and you brought a visitor tonight? We're giving away, we're giving away a beautiful Bible this week. I'm telling you, this is gorgeous. Good night. And uh, we're going to give this Bible away on Wednesday night. And so if you, um, for the person who brings the most visitors. And so did anybody bring a visitor tonight? And if you did, just slip your hand up so I can get your total tonight. All right, Adlin, you bring somebody tonight? All right, good. We're going to add to your total this evening. You're on a roll. Good, good deal. Anybody else? Any? <laughs> Brother Tommy, I'm going to tell you, if you've seen this, you'd want it. I'll promise you that. It's a nice one. It's a nice one. And uh, anybody else? Any other visitors tonight? Did I miss anybody? All right. Adeline, you're on a roll tonight. So hang in there. Stay with it. So here's the thing. We got two more nights. We got Tuesday and Wednesday. And so uh, I hate me signing some folks up and inviting folks to come. And uh, we're going to give this beautiful, beautiful Bible away this coming, this coming Wednesday night. So I hope that you'll, uh, you'll get involved in that. Well, I'm going to ask the preacher and his dear wife, I'm going to ask them if they'll go to the back out here in the atrium and, um, and just, I don't know how long they can hang around, but, it, but if they can hang around for a few minutes, just go by and shake their hands and let them know how much, you, how much you appreciate them being here tonight. And then find Harrison Ridge. And Brother Ronnie didn't say anything tonight about the, uh, about the CDs, the music CDs, but they've got a, a table out back. And uh, I want to encourage you, go by there and check the table out and add some good music um, to your library, and, uh, and boy, they, they sang some great ones tonight. So go by there. They'll be out there at the table. Go by there and shake their hands and let them know how much you appreciate them being here tonight. And we're glad to have you. Are you glad you came tonight? Amen. I'm glad you came. Thank you for being faithful to the Lord's house. And I know revivals takes time. It takes energy. It takes a lot of effort. But I can promise you this, by Wednesday night, we'll be glad that we sacrificed and uh, and I believe the Lord's going to the Lord's going to connect us more to that vine that He preached about tonight. Let's all stand, if you will, and we're going to be dismissed under a word of prayer. I hope you'll go away blessed. Come back tomorrow night and uh, come praying. And we're looking forward to the all that all the Lord is going to do. I'm going to ask Brother Rodney, Rodney, come on up here, if you will, and dismiss us in a good word of prayer, and then you go away blessed this evening. Day, I thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy. And the dear God, thank you for a love that is like no other. And the dear God, I know I don't deserve your love, but dear God, I'm so thankful that you pour out your blessings upon me every day. I thank you for this time that we've had in your house tonight, for the honor and privilege that we've had to be here. And the dear God, help us to take your word and apply it to our lives and go out and be better Christians for thee. Uh, dear God, thank you for Brother Penley and his family and uh, for our friendship. And uh, dear God, I pray that you would bless them in a special way, bless this church over at Solid Rock, and uh, go with us as we uh, part our different ways and uh, give us safety home. And uh, thank you for our home to go safety uh, too. And uh, forgive us where we failed thee in these blessings we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We consider it an honor to serve you. And our prayer is that the service was a blessing and an encouragement to your life. 
If you were impacted today by the preaching of God's word, we encourage you to respond. If we can pray with you, or if you would like to make a decision today for Christ, please call us here at 704-327-5662. We have people waiting right now on the lines prepared to help you. Again, thank you for joining us today, and we hope to welcome you again soon. Have a wonderful week.